Hi, welcome to Bricolage with Pink Girly. I'm Pink Girly, also known as Lori. And today I'm going to show you how I finish up my uh, envelope storage journal. Uh, during a live stream, I believe I put this one together and it's just uh, several envelopes that I put some color on them on my a gel plate and then I decorated the front a little bit on this one and I cut the ends off of the bottoms of the envelopes this one I really didn't stamp or decorate too much on but you've got several pockets of course you can decorate or write or journal on these as well and then you can use them to really store things that you want to keep handy by your workspace Gosh, you could use it for coupons, whatever. This is a nice size, but you can use any size envelope. Now I've got several stacks here that I've pre-worked. Uh, I think I did it on a live and I put the color on the envelopes. So these envelopes here, I'm not gonna do all these during this recording because that'll just get too long, but you can see I have several sets here ready to go. And then I started to color and decorate uh, and, and do some jelly printing on these Tyvac um, envelopes. Now these are nice because they're a larger size and of course they're so sturdy and durable. But I'm not particularly thrilled with how some of these turned out. So I'll probably still do some jelly printing on those. I'm not sure. But you can see here. The ones I'm going to work with today, you know, the manila envelopes, they work really well, especially if you're looking for something for some uh, decent storage space. Now, it, you can make them any envelope um, that you'd like to. Of course, small envelopes really would be cute and might work as a tuck in for a journal you might have going. So I'm just going to take one of these groupings um, and maybe I'll do this one. And I've got one, two, three, four, <clears throat> four different envelopes um, that I'm going to put in this journal. And like I said, I used watercolor and I believe coffee on my jelly plate and just got some color on these envelopes. Now these are 10 by seven and I'm going to just take some stamps and start putting a little decoration on some of these well not some of them I'm going to do all of them so I took out my archive uh ink pads I got those in a bag of stuff somewhere and I've got my um what are these called do drop I forgot gold silver and I don't know if it's, yeah and a copper and I'm just using some twine, cotton, hemp type um, material that I have today. A lot of times I'll use the wax linen. I just didn't pull that out. I want to use up some of these ends that I have. And you're going to need a, a large eye needle and either a pair of scissors or if you have a paper trimmer because we're going to trim off the ends. But I'm going to leave the ends on for right now because once I cut those off, I'm going to use those for something else and I'm going to do that in a different video. So I'll show you that at another time. So let's get started. So once you have your envelopes decorated, now of course you can decorate these any way that you want. If you don't have a jelly plate, don't fret, you know, stamp, paint them first. You can do whatever your artistic mind would like. So I'm just going to start by grabbing some different stamps that I have out. And I think this blue might show up and look okay on this. I'm really not too concerned about what kind of image I get because this is really just a start doing a little something something on the envelopes. And I just really am not even thinking about what direction. I just kind of like this, so I'm going to just use it. Oh, let's see what else I have here. I've got my little itsy bitsy 
itty bitty teeny weeny. Let me grab some of these other. And I think I'm going to use different colors. But probably colors that go with, I keep getting out of frame, go with um, the watercolor that I put down. And of course, I want it to show up. So let's see what other options I have here. This blue might look nice. I think most of these are in pretty good shape as far as having quite a bit of ink in them. I just always forget that I have them, to be quite honest. Now, you can, if you're making this for yourself, you can tailor this to a theme, color. They're really just quite simple and they're fun to decorate. So I'm just getting a little bit of a couple different stamps. And I'll do the flaps. Now, when I do the Tyvek envelopes, the flap has that piece of paper that you can remove and it's glued here. So on those, I put a piece of tissue paper or um, some kind of decorative paper like scrapbook paper that I can glue down. So it looks nice and you can remove the tape because if you remove the tape and don't put anything there, you shut your, your envelope, you're not going to be able to get in there for whatever you've had stored inside. Let's put a little bit of this. I love this brick wall. So now once I do that, I'm going to put this aside because the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come back and cut those ends off. Now I have a red here and an orange, orange blossom, and this is called red geranium. Now this was an envelope that I used for something else. So I've got somebody's name here which I'm going to cover that up. So I just like these little dots. Of course, I've got a different color on this side. Let's grab some of this blue I left open. Now this just takes a little while. I didn't get out a, I got out other things, but I didn't get out a, um, see if I have one here I can grab easily a stamping block it's always nice to have a stamping block available here's one it's got something on the other side but that's that's not going to bother me so if you try if you decide to try to do this little project i'd appreciate it if you'd leave me a little comment let me know how you make out and how you like it. I've got a couple of these that I use personally. That um, The one I have little bits of ephemera in. And the other one I have all my stencils that I use on a regular basis. And I have a filing cabinet right next to me where I store a lot of my things and I'm able to keep those right in my drawer so I can grab them very easily. And the other thing is if I wanted to, I could certainly put them on a shelf, but my shelves are a little full right now, so I don't have any room on my shelves. But if you use a smaller envelope, certainly you could put it in your handbag, you know, for a coupon holder, leave it in your car. I don't know why I keep scooting down. I'm kind of out of frame for you. So you see, you don't need much. And you can put on as much as you like, right? So that's two, and you could certainly use as many envelopes as you might like to have pockets for decorating. 
I like the way this one turned out. I used uh, like a block stencil <clears throat> on my jelly plate. I think this one turned out pretty cool. Pretty cool if I do say so myself. Now I had some paint on this stamp, so I'm not sure how this stamp's going to... Oh, it works good. Fabaroonie. All right, let's see what colors we want over here. Maybe some. Oh, let's do. What I do with my. Oh, that's a lighter blue. I don't know what I do with my. There it is. I'm trying to be conscientious and cover up my. Choose a little bit of this brown. This one's called potting soil. I had purchased some things from a lady quite a few years ago now, almost like her whole art room, kind of. And uh, she had a lot of she had a lot of stuff, <clears throat> and so I was able to get some things that I wouldn't normally be able to get. And uh, I keep forgetting I have these ink pads, and they're just they're really nice and there's a wide variety of colors so let me put a little bit of let me see if I can get this butterfly on this side now where do you see how simple this is to go together so sometimes you might be able to go to a thrift shop and pick up a box of envelopes for really just a couple of dollars. And when you look at it, you might think, what in the world would I ever do with all those envelopes? But see, it's nice to have them for something like this because you can use quite a few in just one project. And I'll tell you what, I think a girlfriend would really appreciate having uh, a gift of one of these. And you could pop a little gift card in one of the pockets. Now, what I like to do with mine personally, if I'm running through my ephemera or I see something in a magazine that I like and I think, oh, what would I do with that? I just cut it out and glue it in my. I should have pulled out one of mine. I just glue it in. The one that I use personally. And then when I'm in and out of it every day, I get to enjoy the image. Uh, I think I might have it buried. Mine are stuffed. I have them absolutely stuffed. I don't think I have a green. Yeah, I have a green. Let's try a green. I cover that potting soil. And you can use your favorite stamps, or like I said, if you want to theme it, say bumblebees. I got a really cool new set of stamps that's bumblebee themed, and I don't know where I put it. Isn't that just shocking? All right, let's go back to the geranium red. I wasn't sure which group of envelopes I was going to use today. And I have one set that's really darker colors. So I thought I might like to use some of the golds. Some of the metallics, but I didn't really choose that. Okay. So I think this is enough. You can always add, right? But it's just, you're getting the idea. So now I'm going to take my paper trimmer and I'm going to trim off the bottom of my envelopes. Now they're all sealed, right? We all know envelopes have that little sealy flap down there. That's what I'm going to cut off. And... I'm going to use that in another project, which I'm going to do a separate video for that and show you what I'm what I do with those.
So once you get cut some of these off, you sit at your desk and you think, oh, what can I do with that? Some of us just have a hard time of throwing things away. So now I'm just going to cut these. I'm going to save that. And the reason I left them on while I stamped was so that I, I have some of those designs and the stamp marks that I put on the envelopes. I think usually, I think most of mine are more than four envelopes, but I don't want to get too carried away for the video. Okay, so I've got my envelope ends that I'm going to take, put aside so I don't misplace those. And then I'm going to fold my front flap in. Now, once you get decorating and putting ink or paint on your envelope, sometimes the flap gets a little fiddly to bend in. But just use your bone folder. And then just fold your envelopes in half. Now, one of my larger envelopes, some of the pages, some of the flap, I cut shorter because I wanted it to, um, I should pull that out and show you. I wanted to be able to put some of my net more narrow stencils in it. Now, you can take the time to ink your edges if you want to do that. just depends on how involved with decorating you want to get. Let me see if I can find my I'll find the right one so I can show you the shooter. That's my Tyvek one. The other thing I didn't get out was a piece of, um, so this is one that I use personally. See, in this one, I cut the page a lot shorter because I wanted it to fit my more narrow stencils. And then if I have smaller things, the flaps are good to have. And then this is what I was telling you. I take the um, tape off and then just glue some kind of design paper or tissue paper, whatever you have little scraps left over. You can use that. And then on this one, I just put a piece of chiffon. I can keep it tied shut. And then things don't pop out as you know readily. Really, they don't pop out at all when I when I tie it shut. All right, so now I've got them all folded, and then I just want to be mindful for myself of colors and how I want it to look. Um, and I decide what I want to be my front. I know, decisions, decisions, right? I usually like to have a flap be my front. I think I'm going to use this one. So then I'm going to put in another different color and I flip it. I like to have a flap and then the bottom of the envelope. So then I put the flap here. You can lay it out any way you desire. And you might want to think about what you want for your center. And that's all I did. And then I didn't mention having some kind of a tool where you can poke some holes. Now, let's see. I pulled out these threads because I wanted to try to finish up some of these. I'm thinking I like the green. So I'm just going to take a length of this. I usually do three or four times the length of my journal. I like to have 
extra. So I can, either, if I choose to, I can dangle something from it. Uh, of course, it's helpful if you know where the end is. So I say I would go one, two, three, four. And I have plenty, so it's not like I need it for another project. And then I just use some kind of a poke tool or a, an awl. You could really use a paper punch, I guess, if you had something small enough. Yeah, I don't think you want your, your holes too big. And I'm just going to do a simple three-hole pamphlet stitch. So that means I need a large, a large eye needle. And I'm just going to poke a hole all the way through the center. Now you can poke this down into a book or a sponge or something like that. Just be careful you don't poke your fingers. So it's a hole in the middle right through the fold. So I've got a hole in the center, top, and bottom. Now I'm going to thread my needle, hopefully. I'm not going to put a knot. No knot. Look, see, now I didn't do that very well. My twine is... There I go. I got it. I got it. Now, you can have your ties on the outside edge or in the center. I like them in the center because I usually put some kind of fabric around the outside so I can tie it shut. So you just start in your center. Pull your needle through. You're going to leave the tail a couple inches, right? And then you can go into the top or the bottom. Sometimes it's hard to find where you punched your hole. Now you don't want to pull too hard because then you pull your tail. I keep having that. Oh, that doesn't help, does it? Woo! I got me some glare. All right, so you pull that through. Then come down into the center. Down to the bottom hole. You want to make sure your thread is pulled. Whatever you're using is pulled. Not too tight to tear into your envelope. But you want it snug enough where you don't have any loopy doopies there. And then you go back into the center. Okay. I just love that little brick stamp. That's one of my favorite stamps. Now, if you have a hard time pulling this through like I do sometimes, you can get a pair of pliers. And I like to have my thread one on one side and one on the other of my center cord. See that? And then just make sure you don't have any gaps. Just give it a little tug. At this point, you can cut it, take your needle off. You can always trim these. I like to leave them a little longer, and then it gives me just some options as far as um, if I want to tie something as a charm or something, little paper, butterflies, or whatever. And that's it. This is what I decided I want in my front. And then I find a piece of something to tie around it. And uh, I will need a longer piece. I'm just going to use this to show you. And rather than fuss around, I just get a ribbon. This is like the end of a, a pillowcase or something. See, I like this kind of stuff. And I just flip one end under the the top string and I slip the other end under the bottom string and just you know it makes a little loop and then I just pull that through just try to pull that gently but pull it snug and 
then I can come around the back and I can come around the front. And I can tie it. And if this gets real chunky, if I decide to leave this one on here and this gets real chunky with the things I'm going to put inside of it. I can always switch it out because it's not sewn in and I can give myself a longer piece. And then you can decorate the front like I did my sample. Where did I put my sample that I showed you at the beginning of the video? Bum, 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 bum. It's right here. See, I did some additional stamping. Did the art by Marlene. Looks like I came around the edges with some distress crayon. You can do as much or as little as you like. So there you have it. That's the video for today. Let me know if you make one of these. I would love to know. Leave me a message. And if you haven't joined and subscribed to my channel, I would certainly love you have a come on board and join me for some other videos and maybe a live once in a while. That would be great. Don't forget, take time to be creative and enjoy the journey. And I hope to see you soon. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.